well pollination. So next one is another abiotic agent that is water. Yes, <coughs> pollination that takes place through the water that is called hydrophilic. What is that one more? Pollination that takes place through the water that is called hydrophily. But this hydrophily is of two types. Epihydrophily and hypohydrophily. How many types more? Hydrophily is of two types. Epihydrophily and hypohydrophily. So, what is this epihydrophily and what is this hypohydrophily? So, the pollination that occur on the surface of the water that is called epihydrophily. What is epihydrophily? Pollination that occur on the surface of the water that is called epihydrophily and the pollination that occur beneath the water or below the water that is called hypohydrophily. But in which members of the plants we can observe this hydrophily? <coughs> See, it occur only in few aquatic plants. The hydrophily occur in few aquatic plants. Especially 30 genera of the monocots. How many genera? 30 genera of monocot. 30 genera of monocots. Example for this Valisneria, Valisneria, Jostera, Seratophyllum, these are all examples for hydrophily. Valisneria, Jostera, Seratophyllum, these are all examples for which one? Hydrophily. Now, the characteristics of hydrophily. Hydrophilus flowers. So, what are the major characteristics of these hydrophilus flowers? The flowers are small, not very colorful. What is the thing? Ma? The flowers are small and not very colorful. Flowers are very small but not very colorful right now and uh, here nectarless odorless right now nectarless and uh, odorless but uh, stigma is uh, sticky and wettable right now so what about stigma stigma is a sticky stigma is sticky these are all the characteristics of entomophilus flowers these are all characteristics of entomophilus flowers now we will discuss each one separately epihydrophilic and the hypohydrophily yes shall we start epihydrophily epihydrophily So what is epihydrophily? Pollination that occur on the surface of the water that is called epihydrophily. Example for this uh, Valisneria. Valisneria. So <coughs> Valisneria. It is a <coughs> seed grass. It is a Valisneria, it is also called ribbon weed. Ribbon weed. And it is a dioecious plant. So we know that what is that dioecious plant? The male and the female reproductive organs are present on different individuals of the same species those are called dioecious plants or unisexual plants 
So that means uh, male reproductive organs are present in one plant and female reproductive organs are present on another plant. See, so this is a Say this is a female plant and this is a male plant. <laughs> so both the male and the female reproductive organs are present on different plants. So <clears throat> at maturity, the paddix is going to release the female flowers. Whatever the female flowers are released from this paddix, they can float on the surface of the water. The anthers are attached on the so <clears throat> on the surface of the sepals or so stamens are present on the surface of the sepals. See, so this is a female plant. When the female reproductive organs are mature, right now, as a result, so whenever the female reproductive organs are mature at the time, so they can extend their long slender elongated structure that is called stack so that the stigma is exposed on the surface of the water. Due to wind current, the female flowers Due to wind current, the male flowers freely float on the surface of water and they come and contact with the stigma. As a result, the mass of pollen grains are transferred onto the stigma. As a result, it facilitates pollination on the surface of water. Hence, it is called epihydrophily. But here, the most important thing is before maturation. Right now, both the male and the female reproductive organs are present inside the water. Upon attaining the maturity, so spadix, spadix release the male flowers and at the same time, so the female reproductive organ extend their stalk, the long slender stalk like structure as a result of, so the stigma is, a, so stigma is extended on the surface of the water due to wind current, male flowers come and contact with the stigma of the female flower as a result it transfer the mass of pollen grains it facilitate pollination but interesting fact is the most interesting fact here after pollination see the stalk of the female flower recoiled back right now stalk of the see here this is a, whenever it attain maturity after attaining maturity it so keep the stigma on the surface of the water after pollination right now this stalk recoiled as a result the stigma or female reproductive organ once again come back into the water so after pollination so fertilization and the development of the fruit fertilization and the fruit formation takes place within the water that means only pollination takes place on the surface of water but right now so fertilization and the formation of the fruit to takes place inside the water this is about epihydrophily but this epihydrophily takes place in valisneria hypohydrophily so what is hypohydrophily pollination that takes place inside the water that is called hypohydrophily example for this jostera jostera 
एंड हाइड्रिला सराटोफिलम so these are the examples for hypohydrophilic so now we will discuss about the joostera see the joostera is the submerged aquatic plant what is it right now the joostera is the submerged joostera is a submerged aquatic plant but uh, the pollen grains of the joostera are uh, very <coughs> long Nail rate two fifty millimeters. But in the members of Jostera, both the male and the female reproductive organs always present inside the water. See, the Jostera pollen grains are long and needle-like structures. Which one? Jostera pollen grains are long. How much long? Two fifty millimeters long, and they are needle-like structures. But interesting fact is here. Sir, what are the major Uh, interesting fact. The major interesting fact is here. So in previous classes we studied that uh, the pollen grains are covered with sporopollenin. That means exine. The exine of right now. So pollen grain has two layers: outer layer and inner layer. Outer layer is called exine, and inner layer is called intern. But exine is made up of sporopollenin. But the pollen grain, the pollen grains of the Jostera members do not contain sporopollenin. But you may have doubt, sir. In the absence of sporopollenin, how these pollen grains protect themselves from the wet or water? That means here the joostera, the pollen grains of the joostera members or majority of the aquatic members are surrounded by a mucilaginous sheath so that they can protect themselves from the wet condition. Which one? The majority of the aquatic pollen grains. In the majority of the aquatic members, the pollen grains are covered with a mucilaginous sheath or substance so that they can protect themselves from wet condition. And moreover, these pollen grains always present inside the water. And here you may get doubt, sir, how they can present always inside the water? That means sir, the pollen grains having specific gravity. This specific this specific gravity is equal to that of sea water because of that reason they are always present inside the water. So this is about pollen grains. So what about the stigma? If the members of Jostera stigma is long and whenever the pollen grains come in contact, as a result the stigma is coiled around the pollen grains. As a result, it facilitates pollination. After completion of the pollination. fertilization and the developments are taking place inside the water but here the interesting thing is both pollination and the fertilizations are taking place inside the water but in case of epihydrophily pollination is taking place on the surface of water but fertilization is taking place inside the water this is about abiotic pollinating agents yes